welcome back to Red Video. Welcome back to the channel, man. So, man, you guys have been requesting this one for quite some time as well. Like I said, I'm catching back up on some of you guys' like long requested reactions. So, this one right here is called One Direction Conspiracy Theories by the same uh, girl. Her name is like Hey Angel, I believe. That's what, yeah, Hey Angel. I knew that. I just be forgetting. Ha! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just be forgetting. But anyways, man, yeah, we is gonna check this thing out here today. Probably gonna make this into a two part thing, but you guys know I get carried away. So, let's say we split this in half equally. That's like 18 minutes, 17 divided by two. That's not an equal number. That's more like seven and a half. Nope, that's uh, that's eight and a half. Eight and a half, so to put it out of perspective, that's 18 minutes and eight and a half seconds. But like I say, we get carried away. So, ha, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm overthinking it, I'm overthinking it. That's where my anxiety come from, I need to stop. Anyways, man, we is for the check to say I had a date. Like I said, I'm trying to make this into a two part thing, but like I say, I get carried away. So we just gonna see when I stop. <laughs> Anyways, we are gonna go ahead and get straight into it, but if you guys are new to the channel, Consider hitting that subscribe button down below on the way to 10,000 subscribers. But I don't, hey, let's shake it out, man. About the setup, I don't know. Let me move the tripod. Okay. Yeah, it is what it is. Oh, for God's sake, Naya! Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Unless you're new, then hi, welcome. My name is Jasmine. I make One Direction videos on this channel, but if you want to subscribe to my main channel, it's always linked down in the description. I'm actually really excited about the video that I'm filming today. I think it's a very cool concept to be doing. I'm surprised I've never done something like this before in the past. Listen, I ain't gonna lie. I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of interested in this one. Like, you know, more heavy than the other ones just because I saw an Illuminati symbol on the, on the thumbnail. But obviously, there ain't no way, though. Ain't no way. I know where they join that mess. That's crazy though. See, that's one thing. Like, you can't be too famous. Like, you just can't be too famous. Do not be too famous, bro. Do not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, million subscribers on YouTube. I'm retiring. Bye bye bye. You know what I'm saying? But just don't be too famous out there. Don't do it. Because you start getting crazy offers. People wanna kill you. I just don't I don't wanna die. I don't wanna die right now. I got stuff to do. So So here we are. Basically, I'm going to be doing a One Direction conspiracy theories video. Like I said, I've never done anything like this on my channel before, so I'm quite excited to get into some of these with you. Before I get started with some of these conspiracy theories, as always, there's a few just little disclaimers that I want to put in real quick. The first one is just that some of these aren't really conspiracy theories. Some of them are really just like funny, like nothing to be taken too seriously, because you know how the fandom is. I just don't want anyone watching to take some of these theories like super seriously or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's just things that have about. been widely thought in our fandom or popular things that have happened that I'm going to okay. explain. Hold up, hold up, just hold up now. She put the quality to 4K out of this thing. That's going to be looking nice. Let's do 1440 though. To people who might not know. The other little disclaimer that... That's... I forgot to mention is that this conspiracy video is not going to revolve around any of the popular ships. The only oh, it's our camera. Oh, I about to say like fourteen forty. What you got? Fake fourteen forty? How you got fake fourteen forty? I couldn't do four K though, because four K probably would have threw out the recording. The thing that I talk about in this video is RBB and SBB, just because it was such a big phenomenon that I needed to put it in this video because it's one of the biggest conspiracy theories out there. Just want you guys to know that I'm not going to be covering the Larry ship, Haler, Hamil, Hendel, Zium, Zary, anything like that, because there's just no need. The only thing I do that's even remotely related to a ship is the RBB and SBB timeline. This RBB, video definitely doesn't cover SBB. every One Direction Don't conspiracy theory. <laughs> I'm just doing a few, so if you guys want like another one or like a part two, definitely let me know in the comments and I'll make another one of other things that could be categorized in this video. But for now, we're just going to talk about some of the ones that I have for you and I'm really excited. So without further ado, here are some One Direction conspiracy theories. <laughs> So I'm going to try and balance this out with some like in-depth conspiracy theories about One Direction and then some funny little harmless ones that people like. So that being said, I'm going to... <laughs> oh dear God. I'm going <laughs> to start this video off with a tale as old as time that only the truest veteran OG Directioners will remember surviving because this was just absolutely insane and that is Mr. X. So the Mr. X Mr. phenomenon X. began in 2012 on Tumblr when there was this account. Mr. X. No, she's talking about X Men. Dang, I ain't no One Direction X Men. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know they, you know, collab. 
that's tough. On Tumblr, making a bunch of predictions about things that would happen in the fandom. A lot of people were starting to submit like anonymous questions and asking them stuff, asking them like who they are, if they're one person, if they're a group of people, and it was all just very confusing. We're about the one who wear blue has twenty tattoos and received the most views. The one who smokes and the first to smoke. What the hell? What the hell he got going on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This man trying to make a uh, what they call these people that do sh uh, weird shit like this? Uh, uh, not a porn writer. What they call it? A uh, uh, a treasure hunt, something like that. No, bro. Damn. Happy birthday, Hammy. Oh, mini brands. It's my B-Day. Yay, mini brands. Mini brands series three are out how, now. How the hell? New mini how the hell I get this ad, bro? Brands, it don't even go with me. Yummy. You ain't gonna never see me. Vegas like, what is this? Surprise mini brands out now. Ridiculous. Then what became dubbed as Mr. X started getting a lot of attention. Everyone was talking about them all of a sudden, not just people on Tumblr. People on Twitter were saying like, yo, who is this? What are these predictions? What's happening? And they started speaking to people via Omegle or Omegle. I don't know how to say it. But, you know, the website where you can go on and talk to strangers. They mm. were sending all these really creepy messages to people on Omegle trying to scare them and freak them out about things that would start happening in the future. The things that this person was sending people in Omegle were very just like cryptic weird things that people would probably use now to troll you. Just like random thing like a bunch of numbers telling people to decode things, telling people weird things about like trees and the sky and just it just really weird things that were super like ominous and like off-putting really unsettling especially to a group of like 12 year olds we were all mm. really young when this happened preteen through like teenagers i mean now a lot of the fandom who were there for this are like well into their 20s and stuff back then we were just little tweens and teens didn't know what to expect didn't know what to do so it was really easy for us to fall for this kind of thing i mean mr x in this day and age probably wouldn't last very long but back then it was <laughs> like done deal everyone actually believed this person was you know, someone who had all this inside information and someone who was able to predict things that were happening, someone that knew everything that was happening. It was just... They started using Omegle to put out all this weird information about the boys' families and stuff that people never knew before. So a lot of people were just really unsettled by the whole thing. Then, of course, some of Mr. X's theories started coming true, like Haler, most notably. So then that's when people, like, took them so seriously and mm -hmm. thought that they were just, like, the real deal. So people would. started making theories that they were actually a group of people, like some kind of legion... <laughs> Mr. X also <laughs> predicted Liam and Daniel Peaser getting back together. It's like back in this time they had broken Daniel up. Daniel Peaser? Who? Them so serious. A group of people. Like some kind of legion. <laughs> Mr. X also predicted Liam and Daniel Peaser getting... Daniel Peaser. Let me see who a Daniel Peaser is. Daniel Peaser. Oh, for real? That's a real person. All right, let me just look up. Oh, Danielle Peaser. Peaser. Oh, she a dancer. Okay, let me see what she talking about. Oh, John. Okay. Daniel Peaser. The way she said it, man, I thought it was like a guy. I was like, what? But, you know, it was a... She probably meant Danielle Peaser. The real name is Danielle, not Daniel. What the world? Right. Getting back together. It's like back in this time they had broken up. Mr. X predicted that they would get back together. And then they did get back together. So a lot of people were freaked out by that too. The fact that they were just predicting all these things that ended up happening. This whole Mr. X thing ended up blowing up so big that even Simon like tweeted about it. For he real? Like, Who is Mr. X? And that kind Dang, of freaked a lot of people out even more because they were convinced that Simon, <laughs> because they were convinced that Simon had something to do with it or that that person had managed to reach him or something. A lot of people just thought him actually saying something about it was insane because that means like the boys must know about it. Simon knows about it. Like this Mr. X person that's like scaring and terrorizing the shit out of the entire fandom with these cryptic riddles on Omegle and Tumblr and all these predictions and stuff. It was just... 
so bizarre. It was pretty scary how Mr. X operated, like I said, at the time this fandom was really young, so it was very strange that whoever was behind it was trying to deliver messages in the way that they were. They were making predictions in the form of really weird like riddles that rhymed and stuff like that, but yeah, they were see. like morbid. Here's an example of one of the riddles that Mr. X posted. This is from December 3rd, 2012. They said, five little birds are trapped in a cage. One little bird fell off the stage. Four little birds, the cage is getting narrow. One little bird got shot by an arrow. Three little birds come out to play. One will die at the end of the day. Damn. Two little birds, one about to die. No one hears his painful cries. The four dead birds, the last one mourn. His heart was tragically torn. Like, <clears throat> that, do you see what I mean now? Like, that's some heavy stuff, especially to like a group of 12 year olds. And it very much implies that all of them are gonna die. December 3rd, 2012. It, it, it sounded like that, but shit, they didn't. He better take your head ass on. I don't know where, uh, where he, um, I wonder where he at nowadays. That man probably in some library just sitting there. Sitting there in the library, just like this right here, waiting on people to come and check out books right here. Just looking around the room. Because people who make riddles like that, you gotta like be smart to a certain extent. And for you to go like on a on like a anonymous spree, you gotta kinda be kinda You gotta kinda be like kinda off to the side, you know what I'm saying? Like so when that riddle was released was the night that One Direction was playing Madison Square Garden for the first time and a lot of people were really terrified. That was scary. Because they for were him. so convinced that Harry was going to die. Because of that riddle that the official right. Mr. X account posted on the third, a lot of people thought that Harry was going to get shot with an arrow on stage during their Madison Square Garden concert. I remember this day so vividly that it's scary. I remember like reading all of these things and crying my eyes out. No. Like I was crying so much just genuinely thinking that Harry was going to get shot with an arrow at Madison Square Garden and like fall to fall dead on stage. I don't know why anyone thought that. Like, how the hell are you gonna get into a concert with an arrow? Like, a bow and arrow? Other people thought that the arrow thing was just a metaphor and Harry was gonna get shot, actually shot. Like, shot shot, not with an arrow, just regular shot. So those were the two theories that were running around at the time, but either way, everyone was terrified. Now, typically when there's a One Direction concert, the fandom keeps up with everything that happens during the concert via Twitter and Tumblr. So. There was a bunch of updates going around on Twitter from the night of MSG that someone in the crowd was arrested with a gun. And they called her Samantha Xavier, which is Mr. X, Xavier X. And the fandom was like convinced that there was a whole group or like legion of people, Mr. X, Mr. Y, Mr. Z kind of thing. No. And the person <laughs> who was Mr. X was Samantha Xavier and she got arrested at Madison Square Garden for having a gun in the crowd. Was that real at all? Like, I think the craziest thing about Mr. X in general is how quickly people started making what they said into other things. Like, there was these creepy riddles and stuff, and people thought things were gonna happen, but then somehow the fandom, like, flipped it and switched it so that all these other things were happen. People were talking about Mr. X, like, putting Niall to sleep forever and worrying the shit out of his brother, Greg. What? And people were making up stories about Mr. X getting backstage at a concert, and everyone needs to calm down because security is back there looking for him. It was just, <laughs> I just don't understand how this, like, Tumblr account making random predictions... Hey, it, spiraled listen, they had everybody scared and this motherfucker at, at the house sitting in a computer chair like this right here. Literally sitting like this right here. And had everybody scared, everybody worried, everybody worried at the concert, blah, 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 this, that, this, that. This man sitting back at the house and probably a recliner just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy though, but. Into all this mass hysteria where people were legit, like, terrified. Nothing ended up happening at the Madison Square Garden concert. Obviously, Harry is fine and all the other boys are fine. But the whole Mr. X thing really shook things up for a very long time. Mr. X ended up disappearing after this whole thing started to kind of die down. But then they ended up coming back in 2015. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, they came back. Mr. X came back and started posting a bunch more predictions that ended up coming true. Allow me to read them to you. They said one will leave and four will rise. Zayn left the band after that, so. Oh, John. Dang. Ooh. Wait, did he tweet that one will leave and four will rise before Zayn left? Because if he did that, then that would have been crazy, but. 
It might have been after he left. So, ha ha ha, you didn't predict the future. Head ass boy. So, yeah. They also said a new life will appear. And then Louie's baby announcement happened. And then they also That's mentioned crazy. something about a couple. Oh, so it was before. Zayn left the band after that. So, yeah. No, for real. That's crazy. Okay, that's crazy. They also said a new life will appear, and then Louis' baby announcement happened. And then they also mentioned something about a couple breaking up, which was Zayn and Perry. They ended up breaking up. And then something about the youngest dying, which the youngest is Harry. So once again, the entire fandom went spiraling, thinking that Harry was going to die again. Again. A fucking gian. Like, we already been through this once, and Dang. now y'all think Harry's Damn, gonna die again. Down, a lot of people she in this crazy. time, though, were still convinced that back in 2012, there was someone who really did get arrested at Madison Square Garden for trying to bring a gun in the arena. A lot of people believed that. It was never confirmed or denied that someone tried to bring a gun into the arena and got arrested. I don't know if that's true to this day. I still don't know if that's true or not. We don't, we never got confirmation. But since we never got confirmation of that, a lot of people were nervous that someone was going to try again in 2015 now that the Mr. X thing had come back. And it was so much of a concern that hashtag Harry Be Careful ended up trending For number real? one worldwide all day on this day. That's in crazy. An to get Harry to be safe. That's of course, crazy. once again, nothing And I'm pretty happened. sure they probably strapped this man up in a. Uh... What they call it? Uh, uh, a uh, yeah, body suit vet? Nope, it's a. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of a bulletproof vest. You know, dang, that's crazy. You know, at the arena, Harry was fine. All of this was supposed to go down at the MetLife Arena, and nothing happened on the night that it was supposed to. Once again, I think Mr. X later went on to continue being active in the fandom not as cryptically and not as bizarrely but i know they ended up releasing a song called scandal where people played the lyrics backwards and swore that there was secret messages hidden in there i don't know much about mr x after 2015 because that's when i stopped caring about the whole mr x thing as a lot of people did because it was just the same old i'm making all these threats and then nothing happened so a lot of people fell off of keeping up with them but mm. Some people who really enjoy that aspect of the music industry, like secrets and stuff like that, kept up with Mr. X. So if you want more information on what happened after all that bizarre stuff, I'll have the song Scandal and some analysis posts linked down below in the description. If your interest is sparked and you want to know more about that, go for it. But for the most part, those are all the things that happened with Mr. X. It's really hard to put together a cohesive timeline of the Mr. X thing. But those are the basics of what happened if you're new and you didn't know. Okay, moving on from all the That's Mr. Crazy. X stuff. I don't know if I'm That's gonna be crazy. able to get through this next one without being sent to the moon laughing because I basically way back when, you know, in those good old days, there was a conspiracy theory widely believed that Eleanor Calder is a triplet. <laughs> when I say that <laughs> Eleanor is a triplet, <laughs> What's that laugh? Nor <laughs> Calder is a triplet. <laughs> when I say oh, that people Lord. believe Eleanor, <laughs> that Eleanor Calder is a triplet. <laughs> when I say that what is believe, that? Who is Eleanor? Eleanor, I don't know who that is. Eleanor is a triplet and that there was three Calder triplets running around pretending to be Louis' girlfriend. I'm not saying that like as a joke. Like no people Oh, John. So Louis had a girlfriend at Eleanor and they thought... She they thought she had three people. Let me look that up right quick. Louis, Eleanor. It got a pop up. Yeah, right here. So this had to be. <laughs> Let me see. This is crazy as hell. This is crazy as hell. Lucy Ellen. <laughs> you lying, bruh. People actually. Okay, now that's just. Y'all just crazy as hell, bro. Look at that. They trying to say how her hair is different. What is up with that? What is up with y'all people, bro? Actually, actually 100% believed in their brains that there was three triplets. That's crazy. Called her triplets. There would be all kinds of Tumblr posts and YouTube videos analyzing different Eleanors that had different facial features trying to prove that it's because there's three of them. They would do things like circle the top of her head. <laughs> I just saw that! Like, at one picture, there would be like a little part right here, and then at one point, there would be nothing. 
and they'd be like yeah it's because there's three of them actually it's because she's parting her hair different ways but go off if i do this look it's gone now and but people legit thought that i'm sorry that looked the same though <laughs> that, that looked the same <laughs> but you know <laughs> it looked the same but like look <laughs> what i don't know it looked the same to me i don't know that the difference in her hairline was because she had two other sisters not only that but the sisters had names there's eleanor <laughs> gretchen and tina why <laughs> i want to know why their names People, were bruh. tina and gretchen where did that come from that's the one thing i don't know about the calder triplets is i never knew where their names come from like how did you know that their names were tina and gretchen did someone just make that up and everyone went with it? Here's another like comparison picture that someone did trying to prove that these two people are different. This is Tina over here on this side and then Eleanor over here on the other side. They say that one of them has a higher arched eyebrow. One of them has dimples <laughs> and the other one doesn't. The other one's face is shorter. The other one's lips are thinner. Lord have mercy, bro. Thinner hair. <laughs> it's just That's the same crazy. person. It's the same person. I don't... No, yeah, people tried to prove that their noses were different, <laughs> eyebrows were different, face shapes, hair parting. It was just... And, like, people legit believed that there was three of them. There was also this picture of, like, Eleanor at some party or something from a few years prior to her becoming Louis' girlfriend. And there was three of them in the picture. And people would, like, circle them and be like, Yep, here's a picture of Eleanor at a party with Tina and Gretchen. Who called her triplets. I'm not going to get up here and bash her like everyone else, but she needs a lot of psychological evaluations. That's crazy. That's crazy. I can't even get mad at the ad. I don't know what's worse, the ad or what people be saying. I just... Two pizzas, I, wings, breadsticks. Now I'm starting to get mad. Box. Now you put Only two pizza. ads. No, that's no, that's crazy. That's crazy. But The next conspiracy theory is pretty interesting and something that I've never really seen anyone speak on in like a video before so but a lot of One Direction fans believe that they have people on their teams that go undercover on like Twitter and social platforms as fan accounts to kind of do some inside work on the fandom if that makes sense. A lot of people also think that there's fan accounts and update accounts that are in direct contact with the boys as like teams also for the same reason to kind of infiltrate the fandom. This is something that I think is very believable and that I think is more than likely. I do know for a fact that there's update accounts that have direct connections to the boys' team. They work closely with each other because update accounts are able to influence the fandom very easily. So it would make sense for them to keep in contact with members of the boys' teams for like picture releases, stuff that's happening, fan projects, things like that. It makes a lot of sense, but I don't know for positive that they have people go undercover in the fandom, but I think it's likely. This is another one of those things that's not really a full conspiracy theory because like, yeah, I think it's pretty true. It's just something that nobody really ever says out loud. It would make a lot of sense too, to have people on their teams go undercover as a fan account to kind of plant pictures. Like, do you ever wonder where pictures come from? Like when these pictures just randomly surface, where it's like, where did this come from? Why is this unseen all of a sudden floating around the fandom? Well, it's probably because someone on their team had it and waiting for a time when they need to use it perhaps to distract people from something else that's going on or to distract from something they don't want people to know about yet. So I wouldn't put it past their teams to have people pretending to be fan accounts, not only to spread pictures though, but also to start rumors on purpose. That's part of the music industry or receipts on purpose. Yep. or planting like ideas like you remember the whole Aroda phenomenon when random people all of a sudden made the Aroda thing about Harry like how did they do I that? don't know what that is because I don't know. there was people undercover as fan accounts who were like hey look at this it could be about Harry just to kind of get ideas stirring to make the fandom be like oh and latch on to something and then you know create the buzz from there Definitely 100% believable. Hey, it's me. It's the next day. My camera died last night when I was in the middle of filming this conspiracy video. So she doing the rest of the video like this? Bro, I like how 100% like she is, though. We need more people like her in the world, though, because... Yeah, we need more people like her in the world. Oh, but I didn't want to have to film the rest of it on my phone, so I decided to just wait until today to do the last theory. It's all good. So like I said in the beginning of this video, I do want to go ahead and talk about the Rainbow Bondage Bear and Sugar Baby Bear, aka RBB and SBB phenomenon. 
once again just because it was such a huge thing that happened and it's so bizarre and if i'm making a conspiracy video about one direction the rainbow bears absolutely need to be a part of it once again i'm not going to be doing any kind of super in-depth larry analysis i just want to talk about the rbb sbb timeline to kind of explain everything that RBB, happened SBB. and why people think that harry and louis were the ones doing it so if you don't want to hear about the rainbow bears then you can just click off the video because that's going to be the last theory but if you do want to hear about the rainbow bears i would highly recommend because it's so bizarre and i love telling this story so here we go with the entire RBB and SBB timeline. By the way, I will also have a link to the Rainbow Bears master post on Tumblr if you would rather read about it than listen about it. That post is by Louie and the Alien on Tumblr. So basically this whole thing started back during the Where We Are tour when a fan went to Build-A-Bear and made this rainbow bear with nothing on it, just a regular plain and naked rainbow teddy bear and threw it on the stage at one of their concerts. Now typically when One Direction fans throw things on stage, the boys will throw them back into the audience. They usually kick like bras back into the audience <laughs> or someone throws their phone up there, they give them back to them stuff like that but this rainbow bear was kept on the stage for the rest of the show nobody ever picked it up acknowledged it or threw it back in the audience it just stayed there and then a few days later it showed back up at one of the shows but this time decked out in like electrical tape no and this electrical tape was wrapped around the bear in a way that suggests it was supposed to be bondage gear which is where the bear got its name rainbow bondage bear from the bear was put on display at their shows and Josh Devine, One Direction's drummer, even posted a picture with the bear. So a lot of people Dang, didn't really take it seriously in the bear. beginning. It was something that was just fun, like a joke. It was just kind of there, had tape on it. Josh was posting pictures with it. At one of the Where We Are shows, still just a few days later, the bear was put on display with a Twitter account, like a sign posted in front of the bear encouraging people to follow it on Twitter. The Rainbow Bears did have two Twitter accounts, the first one and then the second one that came later. The first one that I'm talking about right now was at BondageBear1D. The first few posts by the Rainbow Bear on its first Twitter account were very random, very playful things that nobody really blinked twice at, kind of like stupid things like the bear drinking too much and then throwing up in what the toilet. The but the thing about the bear was that it never posted a tweet that was just words. Every single time this bear account posted, it had a picture of the bear attached to it. Everything was really fun and playful until the bear account started posting things about Judy Garland multiple times, which made people a little bit confused. It'll make sense later once you get into the trend of the bear, but in the beginning, a lot of people were confused why it kept talking about Judy Garland. And then shortly after it kept talking about Judy Garland, the account randomly got suspended and wasn't heard from for a while. So in the mm. beginning, the rainbow bear was a very short-lived phenomenon. Excuse me for using the word phenomenon so much in this video, I know. It's annoying. But in the beginning, the rainbow bear was very short-lived. Like, it was kind of thrown on stage. Okay, someone put tape on it. Okay, it had a Twitter account where it was posting a bunch of dumb pictures and then randomly got suspended and people kind of forgot about it. It really just wasn't much in the beginning. But then the Rainbow Bear made a reappearance the following year on One Direction's On the Road Again tour in 2015. It so, randomly the, so the bear showed back up a third time. Now this is crazy out here though because this thing is stuffed with cotton, right? This thing is showing back up. I think they just go remake the bear. No, they ain't that what they do. They just go remake the bear. Came back without anyone really saying anything about it. It was just put on display again. But this time, instead of just wearing like the tape, it was actually wearing clothes. Mm. Like someone was dressing it up with shoes and like clothes. Sometimes it would have like sunglasses or like necklaces, Hawaiian lays. Sometimes it would have things. Hold up now, I finna get on them shoes, boy, on oh, God. They have, like, sunglasses or, like, necklaces, Hawaiian. Bruh, these, these is some fat-ass shoes. Don't wear them things. Them is, like, don't wear them. <laughs> don't wear them things, bro. Them things is ugly, bro. Hey, I gotta say it. Them things is ugly, but good God. It's almost like the shoes is bigger than the whole bear itself. That's crazy. And see, like, if they threw that bear up sta uh, on stage with them big boots on... Bro, that thing isn't just, bro, especially if they hit somebody with it in the head or something, say goodbye. Somebody is taking a nap. That's crazy because them things is big. Them some big shoes, bro. Don't, uh -uh. Good God. I never wear them things. Oh, hell no. Nah. I never wear them. It lays. Sometimes it would have things like clipped to its head, like hair clips to on its head, like very random outfits instead of just the electrical tape. 
And the weird thing about the bear at the time was that nobody ever acknowledged it. Nobody. None of the boys ever drew any attention to it, said anything about it, tweeted about it. Nothing, which is just very odd because the boys, as you know, at One Direction concerts are typically very involved with the crowd. They like to read fan signs. They like to call people out in the crowd and find out what they're doing. And, but they never drew any attention to this literal rainbow teddy bear dressed in these weird, crazy, elaborate outfits sitting up on display at their concert. Never said anything about it. Josh wow. Devine is the only member of One Direction in this time who ever acknowledge the bear because he was posing for photos with it people thought that he was the one dressing it up and he literally said like no i have nothing to do with that eventually over time the rainbow bear started being dressed up as freddie mercury very obviously freddie mercury because it had the, like the stash and then sometimes it would be seen wearing like iconic outfits that freddie mercury used to wear what the hell? so fans were like oh now the bear is freddie mercury and that's when some people started to like actually pay attention to the fact that this was the second time the bear was referencing someone who was a gay icon in their time first it was judy garland who was a gay icon in her time in the 50s and then it was freddie mercury who obviously is one of the most influential gay icons of all time so then that's what drew a lot of people's attention to the bear they're like why does this bear keep referencing why gay does icons that bear like keep that? referencing then i don't know hey let me stop right here though i got i need bro if i watch it if i keep watching it nope she's talking about the bear again here so listen we're gonna stop it right here 22 23 stop it right here Give you guys a little bit more because I don't want to just make a video tomorrow. I think it's going to be like five minutes because I just keep on watching this and you know what I'm saying? We get lost. Anyway, so that is good though for the reaction, man. Expect part two tomorrow. But if you guys did enjoy part one, make sure you guys hit the like button down below. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button down below as well. All the way to 10,000 subscribers. But that though, spit more quality care. Coming out the same. Peace out. Love you guys.